The next talk we have is Mariana Heborn. Mariana is going to talk about um, the federated data governance journey that she had when, at Merck Group. She said it paves the way for broad experimentation and innovation in data in ways that were not previously possible, um, but that organizations should carefully consider how to do this safely and how to bring stakeholders along on the journey. Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for having me, Melissa. We will spend the next 30 minutes talking about the key data mesh principles and how did they help the data governance initiative in the healthcare sector of our vibrant um, company Merck. Uh, company really passion uh, company really passionate for technology and science. For that, let me um, walk you through the agenda. First, we will have a look um, what is um, the data governance about, we, the data governance we are applying, and um, what are the benefits of using the data mesh principles. And I will share with you our approach and how did we start, um, how did we evaluate it, and um, how exactly the data mesh concept was helpful for us to improve our initiative. So let's start. As I mentioned, we're on a data-driven journey as the majority of the organizations nowadays. And um, on that journey, we are aware that there is a very high complexity and um, that there could be a roller coaster of ups and downs and non-expectable um, events. That's why it was really very important to us to have a clear goal. That's why the fair data, the findable, accessible, interchangeable, and reusable data was something, not just the buzzword, but really, really wanted to have um, data at optimal quality in a compliant way and ideal speed when we work with the data. Um, and this was the goal uh, for the data governance initiative um, as a base for all the data analytics initiatives and projects and, um, um, and goals in the organization. A situation that we would like to mind is the one like um, the, the one seen in Alice in Wonderland where Alice comes to a fork on the road and sees the Cheshire cat and asks her, what, uh, which way should I take? And um, the cat answers, where do you want to go? And Alice, um, Alice says, I don't know. So we wanted to know where do we want to go? Because the answer is really, then it doesn't matter. Our way was the way to the fair data and um, main problems that we wanted to solve were um, the silos in terms of knowledge, workarounds, and um, the increasing amount of data. Um, this is something I think I don't need to explain to the audience that um, the data amount is increasing every day. And another problem we are facing is um, the monolithic approach. Uh, the, with the increasing amount of data, our teams can't make it to answer properly all the questions coming to them every day. That's why in this case, the data mesh concept is something that really can help to shape and reshape the um, data governance approach. Let's have a look at the four principles. I, I think uh, the majority of the uh, people are aware of them, but um, having a domain oriented um, and ownership and architecture is something that is not only data governance specific and helpful, but also for every single um, data initiative and um, undertaking. Um, and the self-data infrastructure as a platform and having um, data as a, and uh, handling data as a product um, uh, as a, and the federated data governance um, and semantic consistency. Those four principles are really the 
um, the the leading guiding principles of um, um, not only of the data mesh concept but also of our data governance strategy when we started shaping our approach and that's it so we have what is data governance about it's um who is doing what with the data and what are the standards and the processes. Um, it means our framework has three main pillars, the roles and responsibilities. We have the four roles um, of the domain owner, data owner, business and technical data steward. And here you can see that this um, decentralized domain um, uh, principle is already incorporated in, in the framework. We want to have different SMEs um, and people working on one data domain and sharing their knowledge um, about rules and guardrails um, for, for the data included in that domain and also about the standards and the processes that apply to the data. Um, let's give you an example. Um, in the healthcare sector, there are commercial and medical activities, and they should be really separated from each other. Um, and this can be done by um, by the people. Uh, the people from commercial should um, into uh, be integrated and interact with the people from the um, medical uh, function, but um, there should be integrity and interchange so that both domains have um, really a, a clear compliance rule that says commercial activities are not allowed to access medical activities and medical data. And that was somehow given with that approach. So how we did it? We started with a step-by-step -step approach. Um, first um, understanding the whole field. It means in the healthcare sector, we have three different functions and um, these functions should work together in a, not in a hierarchical way, but um, in a federated um, data governance model. And um, that was a good way to start our work. And um, the strategy we were following was um, a pull strategy rather than a push one. We started really um, approaching the people and um, asking what should we focus first in order to shape our domains, um, to find the data assets within uh, the domains. Um, uh, I'm aware of the word asset and not data set. It means that data should have a special value to the organization. As we have a huge amount of data, we can't start governing all the data at once. Um, we wanted to start with the most valuable data for the domains, for the sector, for the organization. That's why um, really a communication one-to-one -one interviews with um, leaders, with SMEs uh, were um, needed to find out, okay, those are our domains, those are our data assets in the domains. And um, as we wanted to find and not to make data owners and data stewards, uh, we had a look who is already working with the data, who is more on the owner side, aware of the requirements and who is more hands on the data. So everything looked pretty well. We had, um, our data governance initiative launched. If you look at the data mesh principles, they were integrated. We had a uh, federated governance. We had a domain uh, driven data model and um, the data the people took care of were at the self-serve um, data ecosystem structure, um, uh, yeah, data ecosystem. But, and, and we had a pretty positive balance at the end with um, 
28 data domains and um, uh, data assets and um, with over um, 80 owners and stewards taking care of these data assets. The KPIs really work pretty well, but at the end, the entire evaluation was, the entire initiative was like a duck, pretty calm at the surface and we were somehow paddling underneath. People didn't exactly understand why should they do something that they have been doing for years, like um, formalizing the rules about the data, uh, about the data quality, for example. It, it was not really clear to them why should I start managing data quality um, now, although I have been doing it for the last decade. And at that point, we went a step back and started thinking, okay, um, where is the problem? Why, um, why are the KPIs looking so well, but uh, the people are not up to date? Um, why they're doing data governance. And um, the answer was that people need more collaboration. We started this decentralization uh, um, of the teams. We started extending it. So if you look at the uh, left side of the picture, um, you can see a data domain, data asset, and um, the different functions, um, the, the people uh, working and taking care of one data asset, they came from the different fun functions, but also from the enabling functions like compliance, um, security, cybersecurity, privacy. We, uh, before that, they were really external consultants so that um, if the team of, uh, if the data owners and data stewards team of uh, the data asset um, webinar data in the commercial function, um, if they need the consultancy of compliance, um, they can go to the open hours. Um, and after the evaluation, we started really integrating compliance, uh, cybersecurity, um, as part of the team. It means that they are not just external consultants, but they're really part of this decentralized team and they shape the rules and um, um, they um, started documenting the data together with the SMEs in the team. And um, this, um, it came out that the different functions have different priorities for the data governance. For example, um, commercial was more into processes for data, um, for compliant data, as I mentioned, medical and commercial, they needed more formalized rules for, for these activities that should be linked to the data and uh, formalized and then presented at the data, um, at the self-serve uh, data ecosystem. Um, and um, operations, they needed more uh, reliable um, data quality that was given with um, the collaboration of um, um, data analytics, uh, data owners, and uh, cybersecurity. And it, I don't say that we are really, um, uh, we have solved all the problems now, but it's, um, it's now a continuous step-by-step -step improvement of, of our data governance initiative. And um, the measure elements, the key elements we were using were really intensive, intensive decentralization and federation of the model. Uh, so we could really scale um, and give a transparency for the entire organization um, and for the activities within 
this data governance and data management across all the functions, uh, not only um, across the measure um, research and development operations and commercial functions in our um, healthcare sector. As a summary, as key takeaways, um, as I mentioned, the decentralization um, should not only be narrowed in, in one function, but um, spread across the functions. And um, the domain-driven architecture, uh, architecture was really applied in all the different disciplines. So that um, the data as a product uh, was shaped not only by one of the functions, but really uh, uh, by all the functions in uh, by all the um, departments um, that are really working with those data, and they were really um, hands-on contributors when uh, when it was up to defining a rule, democratizing the data, and um, and. Um, uh, giving really the power of the data to the people. Thank you very much. Fantastic talk from Mariana. Great to hear about the progress that they made on their journey as they're continuing to go through it and just sharing learnings along the way. What I, I thought was interesting, you know, data governance, they had started this project, they we weaved the data mesh principles throughout their governance journey. And one of the key takeaways I heard beyond what she said was the effort of collaboration, creating collaboration amongst the different uh, groups to avoid those silos um, is such an important part of, of data mesh journey. Um, so it was interesting to hear her echo that. She talked about the evaluation results that, that she had experienced the first, the first evaluation um, and people were asking about why why start managing data quality now, et cetera. And the solution being cl more collaboration across different domains, bringing in compliance, cybersecurity, um, having them not just be these external consultants, but having them be part of the team. And, and I think that's one of the, the key things we hear Data Mesh can help do, which is just enable more collaboration and more understanding throughout the organization of what the data means and how it can work for, for different groups. 